praise God to him. And just for a few moments, as we look into the word of God, at Matthew, uh, sorry, Mark, chapter 2, and verse 1. Mark, chapter 2, and verse 1. I pray that I trust that you have familiarized yourself with this story before. Amen. We will look and see what God has to say. Mark chapter 2 and verse 1, and it reads, And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And it was noise that he was in the house. Amen. We want to talk this morning very briefly from this subject, church in the house. Church in the house. Amen. I need your amen. I need your prayer. Church in the house. For these past months, because of COVID-19, we have been forced to have church in the house. We've had to sit in our living rooms and lift our voices in song, clap our hands and wave our hands, and we even had to take the Lord's Supper in our house. It was a little different to wake up on a Sunday morning and not be able to make our way to the house of God. It was kind of difficult, kind of the struggle was real and, and it seemed Sunday came and it seemed kind of awkward because we weren't able to get to God's house it seemed very, very different. Now, if you've seen it from that angle, just imagine what it was for me having to come and not having anybody to preach to. Very few that did show up. And I understand, I understand we were under quarantine, we were under all of the the guidelines and trying to be safe and that's wise, that's a wise choice, a wise decision. But it just seemed strange. It didn't seem like it was an ordinary, ordinary Sunday. It seemed like it was something was off. Because we had to gather, we were gathered in the house. In our houses, we had to pray. In our houses, we had to, to read the word of God. We didn't have fellowship. We couldn't hear somebody else singing and somebody else praying. We had to do it all. But I want to tell you, even though it was different, even, even though it was difficult, there are some, some good church that can happen in a house. I don't know about you, but there is some good church that can happen in a house. Some of the best church that I've had was, was standing at the, at, the, at the seat in the kitchen and just speaking about where God has brought me from. And I can lift my hand and I ain't got to be ashamed that somebody might see me right there in my house. Oh, they have witness up in here. Yeah, sometimes I, if it ain't in the kitchen sink, it's in my bathroom. I can go in there and close the door and thank God for another day. You can have some good church in a house. Matter of fact, many churches today that are existing today at some point started in a house. Even the early church, they began their worship in a house. For the Bible says in Acts 2 and 46 that they went from house to house, breaking bread and having fellowship one with another. 
Even when Peter was in jail and, and awaiting execution, the saints of God gathered at Mary's house for prayer meeting. They prayed that night that God would deliver Peter out of the jail. You know the story how Peter was sleep between two guards and, and the angel came and, and shook him and said, put on your shoes. We're getting ready to go on a field trip. The Bible said God delivered Peter. You can have some good church in a house. In our text this morning, we find that Jesus shows up in a house. It was in Capernaum after some days. It, was, it says again, so it must have happened before, but on this occasion, the, the mark records what happens on this occasion. He says that Jesus has come back to Capernaum and when the crowd found out that he was there, it was not a news guy out that Jesus was in the house. Now that's a good phrase. I like that phrase. That it was noise that he was in the house. And I could imagine that on this occasion they had some real good church. Because Jesus was in the house. Yeah, you can have a good choir. You can have good preacher. You can have good instrument playing. But unless Jesus shows up, ain't no check going on. Yeah, I won't, when I go to check, I'm not looking to see how many people are there. I'm looking for the Lord to meet me there. I want him to be there. If he ain't there, ain't no need to be in there. It's in the house. Jesus is in the house. And, and, and noise got out that he was there. That so many people came and they was having a good time in the house. Because the text tells us that Jesus preached unto me. He preached to me. Now I know it had to be some good church. Because if anybody can preach, it ought to be Jesus. Notice he preached to them and he preached and it, 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 it amazed me that it was the word preaching about the word. Y'all didn't get that. It was the word because John did tell us that he was the word. And the word is here preaching about the word. In other words, he was preaching about himself. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. He was telling them about it. Now, I don't know what text he took. Maybe he talked about how God said he was going to put enmity in between the seed of the woman and the enmity between the seed of the serpent. I don't know if he talked about that, but, but he went on and possibly talked about how he was the rose of Sharon, how he was the lily of the valley, how he was the bright and morning star. Because there was some church going on up in there, up in there. He was telling them about himself. He was telling them that he was the Lamb of God. That he was the bread of life. He was telling them that I am God all by himself. As they were having good church on the inside, in the house, they discovered, they discovered in their midst, while church was going on, while they were worshiping in the house, while they were having church in the house, they discovered a brother struggling in the streets. I don't know if you read the story, but there was a brother in this story that was struggling in the streets. Jesus shows us here that he is not only interested in worship in the house, but he is just as concerned about the struggling 
in the streets. We can't get too happy and, and kosher and comfortable here in the house and forget about the struggle that's going on in the streets. Yeah, we got to remember those who are struggling. There are folks out there that are struggling in this economy. There are people out there that are struggling in their marriage. They're struggling in raising their children. They're struggling in relationship. Struggling on their job. Struggle is real. We got to have we got to have the ability as believers to not only say hallelujah, but also can say, can I help you? Because true religion, true Christianity doesn't just focus on God, it focuses on its fellow man. Can I help somebody as I pass along? Can I cheer somebody? with a word or a song. And when I can do that, then my living will not be in vain. Jesus is concerned not only with the worship in the house, but he's also concerned about the struggling that's in the streets. And if we want to be a real church, we have to not be so happy about being huddled in the house that we forget that the struggle is going on in the streets. We must care about those who are struggling. This struggling brother, we do not know his name. He could be any of us. Because get this, just because you in the house don't mean you're not struggling. Ask somebody at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue there's a struggle going on. Yeah. Just because he in the house don't mean he ain't struggling. Yeah. And just because you in this house don't mean you not struggling. Yeah, you can have all your Baptist beautiful on and looking real good, looking sanctimonious, but there's a struggle going on somewhere. It's a struggle because we all struggle in our lives to do what is right because Satan is always behind us. This struggling brother, again, I say we, he, we do not know his name. He could be any of us. He's struggling, and his legs can't do what they're supposed to do. He's struggling. But thank God, in the midst of his struggle, he's got some friends. He's got some friends. You know that old song said, friends. How many of us have been. Free. How many of us have been? Right. Amen. Then there was another old song that said, the let's be friends. Uh -huh. Why can't we be free? Y'all know that song. Y'all know. Right. Why can't we be free? Right. Thank God for some friends right. who sees their friend yeah. in the struggle. Yeah. And these friends of here are so good to him they can't just let him struggle by himself but they decide that if our friend is going to get any better we need to take him to Jesus if our world is going to get any better we need to bow at the feet of Jesus if our city is going to get any better we need to bow down at the feet of Jesus. Yes, yes. So he said that these friends got together, said Jesus is in town. He's in the house over there. Yes, yes. Let's go on down there and take our friend. And the Bible said he was carried by four. Yes. Four nameless friends. Yes. Don't know what their names are. The Bible doesn't record their name. That's all right because the Bible didn't record it, but God saw it. And a lot of times, just because they don't record what you do for God, don't worry about it. God sees everything that you do. He knows what's going on. So these old friends put him on a pallet, put him on a mat. And the Bible said they got to the front door, and they said they couldn't get in because of the press. 
it was so many folks around the door. And I can understand that because Jesus was in that. Wherever he is, there's a crowd. It may not be a crowd of necessarily of people, but there's some crowded hearts that's in there that want to get next to Jesus. Want to get close to where he is. Jesus is in there preaching. Can't you imagine them pulling up and seeing all this crowd and their friend who is struggling yeah. on this path? Yeah. And those friends wouldn't let his struggling condition persist. Yeah. They didn't say, well, there's too many people up in there. Mm -hmm. We might as well go on back home and make it another day. Uh -huh. Take another chance on another day. But these friends of his were determined to get their friend to Jesus. And brothers and sisters, I know you've got some, some kin folks. I know you've got some relatives that are struggling. And, and you've been trying to get them to Jesus. Don't give up on them. Don't give out on them. Don't throw them away. Don't throw in the time. Keep on striving to get them to Jesus. One day, God will open up their eyes. God will open up their heart. Keep on praying, mother. Keep on praying, daddy. They will turn around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Friends, yeah. they said, well, we can't get in at the door. What we better do is, the friends said, we're going to go up on the roof. Uh -huh. On the rooftop. Yeah. And they said, all right, break it up some stuff. And you know, in life, there's some things that need to be broken up. There's some relationships that need to be broken up. There's some folk you've been fooling with that need to be cut off. There's some friends that you need to delete and unfriend because they're not helping you. They are, they're leeching off of you. These friends, they said, we're not going to give up. We're going to help our friends. Because we believe that Jesus can do this. We believe. We know he's able. Because we've seen him do it before. We've seen him heal paralytic legs before. And if he can do it for them, he can do it for our friends. But they got on top of the roof. And the Bible said they began to break things up. And, and church was going on. And the religious folks the Sadducees and scribes that were in the crowd uh, probably said, what is going on up in here? Uh -huh. You know, the, the roofs, the, 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 the tile and, and all of the dust and, and, and palm branches are falling down and Jesus is preaching and Jesus is continuing to have church. Uh -huh. And I know that the religious folks were saying, uh, man, don't y'all know what's going on? Why are you doing this? Church is going on. You ought to have more respect than to be interrupting Jesus while he's preaching. But oh, Jesus doesn't mind the interruption. He don't mind the interruption here because he came for this purpose. He came to give life and to give people another chance. And so this struggling brother, they let him down in front of Jesus. And Jesus stopped his message because this is important right here. He wasn't so busy uh, with the Bible anymore, but he wanted to meet the need of people who were struggling. And that's what I'm saying in this message today. You can have church in the house but y'all saw the hat. Be careful and take care of those that are struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Reach out and touch somebody. We all have the ability to do that. There are things, my brothers and sisters, that need to be broken up. As these men have broken up the roof of this house. But in our lives, pride needs to be broken up. Hatred and injustice needs to be broken up. Somebody needs to speak out and speak up when injustice is done, being done. Wrong is being done. It ought to be somebody. 
that's willing to go the extra mile to say that's wrong. To the, the thing that's wrong in our country is that we got too many politicians that stay to say, to call wrong, wrong, and right, right. We live in a time now when, when wrong is right. And right is become wrong now. But these men did not give up. They let their friend down in front of Jesus. And Jesus said to the man that was on the cot, he said when he saw the faith of his friend, Jesus healed their friend. God operates through faith, through your trust and belief in him. He will do what we need him to do if we just trust him and believe in him. Bible said when he saw their faith, he healed their friend. He says to the young man that your sins are forgiven. Now, why didn't he just tell the man you healed? Why didn't he just wave his hand over the man and say, get up and walk, you, you, you're healed now. But he tells him that your sins are forgiven. Now, that may not sound like much to you, but when you done done some stuff, when you done done things that you ain't proud of, and you have been places where you should not have gone. And you have said things that you should not have said. And you did it, and you did it proudly. You knew it was wrong, but you did it anyway. Sinning up and down the road, doing your thing, to know that your sins have been forgiven. It's, it's an emotional weight that is lifted off of your mind. Will God hold me accountable for what I've done? Yeah, guilt can eat you alive. It can eat away at your heart and eat away at your mind. But this man was told by Jesus himself that son, your sin have been forgiven. And I can understand why y'all ain't shouting right now. Maybe you ain't done nothing. Maybe you've been raised in church and you've been around church all your life. You ain't never did no wrong. But I can stand and say that I have done some wrong in life. I've done some evil things in life. I've thought some evil things. I've said some evil things. I've been to some evil places. And I know that my sins have been forgiven, have been washed away by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. That's what he said I come to do. I come not only just to bring uh, healing to the body, but I come to bring healing to the soul. I come to let folks know that they can have another chance. That God is not angry with me, but that God loves me. And the reason he does is because I'm going to give my life as a sacrifice for the sins of the entire world. Well, he says to the man, your sins are forgiven. And ain't you glad that God has forgiven you of the stuff that you did? I'm talking about stuff you did 20 years ago. I'm talking about stuff you did for you got here this morning. Stuff you're doing right now. God already forgiven you. And not only has he forgiven you, but he forgave you. And on Tuesday, he forgave you. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he forgave you. Saturday and Sunday and when you leave out of here he's going to forgive you because he's a forgiving God 
and the reason he forgives is because he came to do that. He came to pay the penalty for our sin. Now the church folks in the building that day said, wait a minute. Only God can forgive a sin. Jesus said, that's where I wanted y'all to get all along. To let you know who I really am. That I am the forgiver. I am the pardon maker. I am the one that can forgive sin because I came into the world to die to give life to those who are likely. I came to give my life for those that are downtrodden. Yeah, yeah. So they said, well, yeah, you, you, you making yourself like God. And he said to them, and I'm closing, is it easier for me to say, your sins are forgiven. Or is it easier for me to say, take up your bed. So that you will know, he said, that the Son of Man has power to forgive sin. He went to the struggling brother. He not them, them righteous and self-righteous folks who thought they all had it together. But he goes to the struggling brother. The brother who was down, who had been carried in by his friend, and he says to him, take up your bed and walk. Yeah. That's to prove to everybody yeah. around that's in this house that I am Alpha and Omega. Yeah. To prove to everybody that I am a way maker. And the Bible says that the young man Roll up his mat in front of everybody. And I don't care how bad your situation is. When Jesus speaks, when Jesus speaks, the sister song this morning that we need a move of God. When God moves, everything changes. When God moves, life changes. When God moves, we shall add somebody up in here. When God moves, mountains move. When God moves, things turn around. Have you moved in your life? Have you done anything for you? Ain't he all right? Won't he make a way? Won't he turn your darkness into day? Go on and pick your mat up. What's been carrying you? I want you to carry it now. And some things been carrying us. And we've been packing it around. But now God says, roll that up. You ain't going to need that no more. That unforgiveness, you ain't going to need that no more. That bitterness, you're not going to need that no more. That end that no more. Roll it up. Yeah. Yeah. Roll it up. Said I can. That he may have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah, you can have some good church in house. That day they had some church in that house. And, they, and the people when they saw this great miracle it's, they said that they glorified God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They not only were, were glad, but they were glad for somebody else. Yeah. You know you're really growing spiritually when God can work a miracle for somebody else and you can rejoice about it. Yeah. He ain't always got to bless you all the time. He can bless your neighbor. He can bless your friend. And you can get happy that the fact that God did it for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he's healing in the neighborhood. He know your address. And he's doing things in your neighborhood. He know where you be. And one day when he gets ready, he'll stop by your address. And he ain't ran out of blessing 
Because he got enough healing in his garments to heal the nation. That's what we need now. Our nation needs healing. We need to come out of this. this we need to break this hatred up. Break all this prejudice up and injustice up. Break it up and roll it up. Because we're not going to need it anymore. Because we all are God's children. We all are created in the image of God. Until we realize that fact, we'll still be stuck in our situation. Realize that every person, good, bad, or indifferent, is still created by God. And they deserve respect and they deserve dignity and to be treated with honor. That's what Jesus made with do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yeah. Yeah. The golden rule. Yeah. Yeah. When we do that, we can have church yeah. in the house. Even though we may not have it in this house all the time. In your house. And I'm not talking about the community. But your, your body is the house of the Lord. And no matter where you might be, in your car, in your, your driveway, in your garage, in your kitchen, you can have church right there where you are and let God know that you love Him, that you praise Him, that you appreciate Him. Because He loves the praises yeah. of His people. Yeah. He's worthy to be praised. Yeah. Now, if you don't have no friends, like this young, this, this struggling brother here. It don't matter. You can see your company. Oh, yeah. Just as you are. This man didn't have no church membership or hadn't been baptized. He hadn't took communion. But he had some friends that brought him to Jesus. And Jesus made the difference in this struggling brother's life. Yes. Yes. And I tell you, he can make the difference in your life. We invite you to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't wait till you got everything straight. Because you'll never get everything straight. But just surrender to where you are. And say, Lord, here I am. I'm a wretch under. But you came for wretch under. You came for those who are broken and left out and despised. Those were the ones you were looking for. He said, I came to seek and to save those that are lost. He can forgive you of your sin. Amen. I want to thank God for you being with us on this reopening Sunday. Thank God for our praise. Be. Thank God for those that come to worship the name of the Lord. God is good, I tell you. Church. And His wonders are to perform. Amen. And I just know God is, is, is glorified. When we not only have church in the building, but we don't forget about those who are struggling. And because it could be you. It could be just somebody you know. But all you got to do is bring them to Jesus. Bring them to Jesus. Amen. That's how our prayer team take us out in prayer and song. Amen. We want to thank God for your being with us today. Amen. Thank God. And I'm asking all of you that can with if you want to come back on next Sunday, uh, give me a call. I'll take you 25. Amen. 25, the first 25 that want to come, call me. Let me know you're coming, how many of you are landing. And we will more than gladly make room for you. Amen. Because once I get to 25, I'm going to have to cut it off because we have to have the 16 this Amen. So I want to thank God for you. Thank God for your prayer. Let's pray for our church. Pray for our community. But we need to pray. Join us again tomorrow at 6 o'clock for our Sunday school conference call. Be on the phone by 6 o'clock or a little bit before so you can get into Bible study for the month of October. Amen. With our Sunday school lesson. Amen. Don't forget to pray for the sick and shut Pray that God will bless you and to heal your body. 
Those that are suffering, we pray that God will help you in your endeavor. Amen. We know God is able. Amen. As our praise team, take us out.